Hey, welcome to On Top and Hot. I'm your host, John Zadar, and this is Tuesday, September 13th. Now, before you do yourself an injustice, don't hit that fast forward button. Yeah, I've been checking my Google Analytics. A bunch of you fast forward through this preliminary information before we talk about stocks. You're cheating yourself. No, not of the information I'm actually saying, but that information right there. If you don't have time to comb the news every day, you're missing a lot of catalysts. I comb it constantly. This is news I've personally looked at over the last four or five days. These are all stocks on the OTC market, all penny stocks, no financials, no public offerings, no warrants. These are activities the companies are involved with, deals they're making, acquisitions, all the juicy news. And I put this up here every single day because, well, honestly, it doesn't fit anywhere else in the video. And I got to say something while it's up there, don't I? I mean, I could just play some music in the background and let you watch it and then pop in when it's all over. I could. Now, we like to talk about OTC and penny stocks on this show. Those are OTC penny stocks, absolutely. But there's penny stocks on NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange. Any stock under five bucks is a penny stock, and we look at those as well. Now, I do all of my research on OTC stocks right here at the otcmarkets.com website. That's their business. This company, the otcmarkets.com, is actually on the OTC markets. You can invest in them, and this is their business. All the OTC companies must come here and report to them, and they file all the information as we see it here. It's free, absolutely free. You don't even have to sign in. There's no hassle like that. And the best part, it's updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC. So quit wasting your time running around the internet doing research on OTC stocks. Start here. Save yourself a lot of time. Save yourself a lot of hassle. Get it right the first time you find the information. And if by chance you can't find what you're looking for because no site's perfect, then go off into the big internet and search for that information. No problem. So let's take a look at how our OTC market finished today. I've already refreshed this. That's the only way you get current numbers. You could be here all day jumping from page to page. But until you hit that refresh button, these numbers up here will not change. Oh, goodness, our dollar volume fell. Oh, we were at $1.6 billion yesterday. God, we're down to $1.3 billion. Honestly, I think this is a 52-week low. We've been here before, but I can't remember being lower. So it is a critical number. I don't really pay attention to dollar volume because it really doesn't affect the market. You don't see it bounce up or bounce down based on it. But let's face it, the more money that's in the market, the better it is for all of us. So yeah, we need to see that come up. Share volume, hey, we're still over the double digits of 10.6 billion. We've been having a hard time staying at or above 10, so it's a day of rejoicing. Trades, bloody hell, we're right back there to 250,000, which has been the hover spot for quite a while now. We just can't get away from it. So there isn't a lot of oomph in the OTC market right now, but there are always hot stocks, and I've got some hot stocks to share with you right now. Let's go look at it. So the first hot stock we're taking a look at is ticker NNAX. This is New Momentum Corporation. Now she did not have any catalyst today, not even close. There were no press releases, there were no filings, nothing at all. And she was a running. She finished today at 0 .033, about three and a half cents, with almost 74% gains. Now, I didn't actually notice the gains. That's not what caught my attention. I was actually monitoring trades today. So all the stocks we're going to look at had a lot of trades. Where do you monitor that? Well, I only know of one site. Here we go, OTC Markets. Honestly, I have not found this information anywhere else. Come over here to Market Activity and hit that button, Current Market. That's going to take you to a page where you have to choose from the biggest losers or the biggest gainers. I suppose if you short stocks, you'd want to look at the biggest losers. We're not shorting, so we're going to look at the gainers. And that's what this page is. This is all the advancers. That is the biggest gainer on the entire OTC market, right there at the top. And as you scroll down, they get smaller and smaller. And you can go all the way to the bottom. This list will not stop until it hits the very bottom. All you got to do is keep clicking that more button, and it just keeps going. Now, they've got all the pertinent information you'd expect to find here, but they also have one piece of information most don't expect or even think about, and that is trades. Folks, I consider this a most relevant piece of information. Sure, share volume is important, 
but I want to know how many people put those shares up there. If there's a 10 million share block that's up there from one person, that doesn't help me. I want to see 10 million shares go on the market through 20, 30, 40, 100 people. The more people around a company, the more people trading it, the more price action you're going to get, a better opportunity to make some money. So I am looking at this all day long. So when you come over here at 12 o'clock, it'll show you how many trades the company's had up till 12. Now, of course, it's aftermarket now, so this is a total tally of the whole day. And look, look how many of these are in single digits, and they're making huge gains over here. But just because they made gains doesn't mean I'm going to make a gain. Not when there's that few trades going on. So I'm looking for huge numbers. Double digits are nice. Anything over 50, I start to look at. But when you start getting into the triple digits or the quadruple digits, thousands of trades, you've got to look at those companies. There's a reason others are looking at it, so you've got to look at it too. And that's what I did here with NNAX. Now, as I said, there is no catalyst today. I couldn't find anything why it was running, but people are looking at it. So what I did notice is she had a couple of 8Ks, which you'll see, that came out a couple weeks ago about insiders buying shares and warrants. And then you had a piece of news, a big piece of news, which we are going to look at, that came out a month ago. And that's all you got sitting on the table. But the news is about events that are going to happen. So I'm sure that's why she's running. And since others are looking at it, we should be looking at it too. So she is on the middle tier of the OTC. This is the QB. The B stands for better. It's better because you got to audit your financials to be on this tier. That means you're going to get 10 Ks and 10 Qs, not disclosures, because a real CPA is doing their numbers. So they're more trustworthy, more transparent. They've also got those two green ticks I tell you to always look for in these companies. Verified profile and a transfer agent. This is verified information behind the scenes by an unbiased third party. The OTC markets. It's one of their jobs. It is important information. Now, it's not going to stop the company from being traded if they're not there. But if you're in a company for a long hold, you want as much verified information as you can get. So this looks good. You've got your... Uh, audited financials, and you've got your verified information. Very good. So what is this company all about? Well, they're a travel agency. I know, sounds pretty blasé, doesn't it? But they are a very unique one. They are a book now, pay later travel agency. And they do more than that, and I'm going to explain that here in a second. But there is nobody else out there that lets you book now and pay later. And obviously, the benefit of that is you get a better price the further out you book your bookings. So they've got a definition of their gag fare app. This is what they call their travel agency, gag fare. It launched in the second quarter of 2016. Gag fare links travelers with over 500 airlines around the world, giving them access to great fares, including special promotion fares. And all it takes is one small fee of $10 to secure a booking for up to nine passengers traveling together on the best flights and at the best rate. There are no hidden fees and you only pay the full airfare when it's time to travel. Reminders email will be sent when it's time to pay and travelers can then manage their bookings directly through an airline's official website thanks to the integrated gag fare reservation number. The smartphone app is available on iTunes App Store and Google Play Store. So, what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, that's more than just a bit surprising. She's normally only doing 1.2 million shares a day, which isn't too great, but today she's only doing about 293,000. That's like one third of what she normally does. But look, we've got a huge gain with a lot less volume. Imagine what might happen when that volume comes back. Share structure on this company. We got a decent float, 30.3 million. Not too big, not too small. Just right. Financials, this company making any money. They are. 2019, they were doing zero. 2020, they did $237,000. We know it's thousands because we got to put three zeros behind any of the numbers down here. And at the end of last year, they did 1.2 million. But look at that. Look how much money it cost them. They only got to keep $5,000 at the end of last year for making $1.2 million. Actually, $1.3 million. That's a bit interesting. Is it getting any better quarterly? No. 
This is a horrible first quarter. They had absolutely nothing going on. I don't know if they were changing operations or what was going on here. And then you got about $300,000 at the end of last quarter, and they only got to keep $1,000 of that. Something's got to change here. Looking at those disclosures. All right, I told you they had a couple of disclosures come out here in the last couple of weeks. These S1s are about insiders making purchases of shares and warrants, but they're insider restricted shares, preferred shares, things like that, which is always good, but I don't believe that's what's got the company moving right now. I think it is the news. We've got one piece of news here that came out a month ago. I'm just going to jump into that right now. This came out August 3rd. They tell us here that New Momentum Corporation, ticker NNAX, announced today that it has signed an investment cooperation agreement with Vista Global Opportunity Fund. Now they tell us down here that VG, Vista Global, is an investment fund group incorporated in the Cayman Islands, which is authorized or reviewed by the Hong Kong Securities Futures Commission. They go on to tell us that pursuant to the agreement, VG, that is Vista Global, intends to make strategic investments in NNAX with a total size of up to $40 million for a two-year period, the proceeds of which are to be applied to the acquisition of resort properties in Asia-Pacific countries, including but not limited to license, dive, and ski resorts with operations, and expansion of new projects, research, and developing metaverse tourism solutions, such as combining global leading metaverse technology and green economy. They go on to tell us that NNAX plans to acquire 10 properties at tourist destinations worldwide to renovate the acquired properties into premium resorts that epitomize comfort, style, and luxury, aiming at launching a new global boutique resort chain in the dive and ski markets, taking nature lovers and intrepid travelers to exciting new and established destinations, being located in places of great beauty and close to nature. And they're really putting a lot of energy into making it a bold new hospitality concept. They want everybody to feel like an elite. Now they go on to tell us down here that they are going to be incorporating metaverse tourism. Basically a pre-tour of where you're going. See what it's about. See what your room looks like. I mean, in real, not just a picture, but actually walk the distance of your room in this virtual reality. Beyond Blue can use virtual reality tours or digital avatars to allow our guests to actually walk around a realistic recreation of the property, getting a sense of how big rooms are and what facilities and local tours are on offer. We use virtual reality tours to provide customers with lifelike experiences of a location they wish to travel to. It's kind of cool. So let's go take a look at that chart. She did have a big jump without any catalyst. This being the only news that they got $40 million and they're in the market to buy 10 properties that they're going to fix up so that they can promote their own holiday resorts on their app, right? Nothing new under the sun. Here we are again, right back at my free trading platform, Think or Swim. Of course we are. It's the only one I got. You can get this if you like it. Just go on over to TD Ameritrade, sign up for their free trading account, and they'll give it to you absolutely free to use anytime you want. Just keep your account open, and you can keep on using it. So this is ticker NNAX. This is a six-month, four-hour chart. And the first thing you can't help but notice is that crazy 200-day SMA. What is up with that? Where is it going? Well, that's a telltale sign that there was a big fall prior to what our charts can see. So let's just jump back to one year. Let's see what we can see. Jeez, it's even further back, way back here. And I'm not even going to go look. But you can see our SMAs are clear up here, up at 89.90 cents. But what I do see is over the last year, she's been doing nothing. Flat as a pancake. She had a little itty bitty tiny rose in here, but nothing to talk about. A huge surge of volume here with a spike right there. And then in the last 30 days, she's starting to come alive. Let's focus in a little closer now, back on that six month, four hour. All right, what it looks to me like, folks, is we got a recovery going on here. She was flat all this way, and then she finally broke the 200 when it came down to earth again. She finally got over it, and when she did, she flew. She put on her Red Bull wings and took off, and she hit a high here of about eight cents, and she started off here at a penny and a half. 
So you're looking at over 450, 500% gains there. And then she came tumbling all the way back down, fell underneath the 200, and now has jumped back up on top of it. And I believe that is going to be your bounce where she starts to climb again. Our technicals look like recovery. Our PPO, percentage price oscillator, is churning up and turning around. This is a lot like the MACD, so read it like the MACD. MACD runs on the full price. PPO works on a percentage of the price. That's why they call it percentage price oscillator. Our ADX shows us continuation of trend. We had a change of trend here. It's a little iffy to read right now. Don't really like it. I do like the MACD. We see a recovery position there, and the RSI is now starting to point up. Let's focus in a little closer. Come in on a 20-day, one-hour view. So there is our fall down through the 200 on the one hour and she is banging her head against that 200 right now and you can see she's getting smashed the price bars are between the 200 day sma the red one and the 10 day sma you can see they are not coming out and it's going to get tighter and tighter until it pops like a tube of toothpaste and it will go whichever directions the technicals show us and whoa those are some excellent technicals. First off, our RSI is turning around and starting to point up. MACD, we've had a crossover. It is now surging up towards the signal line. And look at our ADX. This is a continuation of trend. And our PPO, this is percentage price oscillator. Now, the PPO is a lot like the MACD. You read it just like the MACD. But the MACD works with the full price. The percentage price oscillator works with a percentage of the price. And the ADX tells me when the trend changes up here. So it should have one straight line for this entire fall. And it did. See here up at the top, follow me down, right there. Straight line. And then as soon as she changed direction, right there you had a change, right? Boom, it changed. And as soon as she changed direction here, it changed again. Now, what we have here is a mirror image. Do you see that beautiful mirror image between the red and the blue right there down the center? When the two lines are coming together, the price is guaranteed to fall. When they start to separate from their closest point, price is going to go up. Guaranteed. That is a beautiful setup for recovery. Really looks strong. Once she gets above this 200 on that one hour, I would expect to see a zoom zoom. Let's look at that five day, five minute look. All right, we're under the 200 on the five minute. We're under everything actually until today. Today she came out from under the 10, over the 20, over the 50, and is sitting on top of her 10, over the 50, and our 20-day SMA is just about ready to cross the 50. That is a good power move. See our spread there, see the mirror image? These two are going away, that's beautiful. That's what you want to see. The blue going up, the red going down, you know your trend is continuing on. So this actually looks pretty good. MACD looks like she wants to test, but I see a little bit of curve up on the MACD and she is over the signal line. Our RSI is churned up towards its ceiling and is approaching the overbought. I don't see an absolute reason for it to run, but I see a recovery. And once she gets above the one hour, 200 day SMA, I think we're gonna see a monkey pulled off her back and those price bars will get big and we'll get some good jumps. Now, whether she comes back down to the 200 to test it again, I don't know, but I think she's worth a watch. And considering that she's now got $40 million, their business should start expanding. So you may wanna keep an eye on the news for this company as well. Now remember I told you all the stocks we were gonna be looking at, I found because they had lots of trades. And this one is no exception. This is sticker G-O-C-O-F, Go Metals Core. Now I seen the trades accumulating, so I went and did my DD and I discovered this was a mining company. Ah, <laughs> nothing personal if you like them. It's just not my cup of tea. But this thing started showing some impressive gains. I mean, it was running and then it was flying. Then it jumped into a rocket and was literally going to the moon. These are like life-changing gains in one day. And no, when you see the percentage gains, it is not a reverse flip. I can settle that right now. Now, I'm not gonna show you the percentage gains yet. I'm gonna go over the catalyst and then you kind of guess what you think it's worth. And then I'll show you what they got. So she finished today just a wee bit over 35 cents. She is on the pink tier. She's current. She's got a transfer agent verified, but she doesn't have a verified profile. 
but it didn't hurt her at all today, did it? I mean, we'd like to see it for a long hold, but hey, these things can run with or without these green ticks. She does have independent directors, though. Now, the thing about independent directors is you must have them if you're going to uplist. They're on the pink. They got lots of places they could uplist to. The QB, the QX on the OTC, or the NASDAQ, the New York Stock Exchange. Doesn't matter. Wherever they go, they're going to need independent directors. But here's the thing. If you're not going to uplist, you don't need independent directors on the payroll. They don't have any other purpose. So, if they've got them, maybe they have ideas of uplisting. So, let's jump into the news that came out today. It's real brief. You tell me what you think it's worth. They tell us here that Go Metals Corp is pleased to announce nickel and copper sulfites have been visually identified at all five zones from the first ever drilling. They didn't have to keep tapping and tapping to look. They got it first time around. The program has completed 1,250 meters of drilling to date and the initial samples have been sent for analysis. They have five targets with confirmed visual nickel copper mineralization all beginning near the surface. Massive and semi-massive mineralization. Folks, they're basically saying they hit the mother load. And that is all the news. There's no other filings. There's no other news. What do you think that's worth? Think it's worth 200% gains? Nah, let's give it more than that. 500% gains. Oh, you're thinking too small. 1,000. Nope, go up. 10,000? No, more than that. I'm not kidding. Watch this, folks. What do you think of that? 358,000% gains. Folks, this was at 0001 when it started. And it is now at 35.83 cents. That is 358,000% gains. Let's go look at that chart. We are now looking at GOCOF. This is a six month, four hour chart. Oh man, it slipped my mind. We forgot to look at the other information about the company, the relative volume, the share structure. We're gonna go back and look at that. I just got too excited about 358,000% gains. Sorry, folks. All right, so this is a six month, four hour chart and it's pretty lean as you can see for six months of trading we don't have a lot going on here i think we got 20 days of trading and as a matter of fact this low bubble of triple zero one that was the last day of trading before today's news that was 28 days ago now it's not like she's been off the market no she's been available nobody's interested there's no filings there's no news presses there's just no appeal not until today and look at that volume Biom was screaming today. Technicals are strong. We got a crossover in the PPO pushing up. Crossover on the MACD. Crossing the signal line right now. RSI is in the mid-60s. That's where I like to see my RSI. At least in the 60s and higher. And she is pushing towards overbought. So everything looks really good. And she looks like she came in on this chart at about 4.5 cents. But when you jump over here to the one hour 20 day chart, there's only two days, that's all we can squeeze in here. It looks like it actually started at triple zero one. But I think that is pre-market activity, which they don't show us on the five minute chart. And what can you say? That's perfect. That is absolutely perfect. It's running uphill, all green bars, all the SMAs are going up, all of your technicals are going up. Even your volume is increasing all day long. It's picture perfect. Let's take a look at that five day, five minute. We get one day, five minute. Now here they're showing us it started at about 10 cents. So I'm really not sure. There was probably a lot of pre-market activity where it was moving really fast. But if you didn't get in until after the market started, you got yourself anywhere between three and 400% gains if you got in down here. And look, folks, she's been running uphill all day, ended on a high note, a high bubble. Everything looks great. Doesn't look like it even wants to quit yet. Technical still looks strong. Everything is pointing in the grow position. Now, just out of curiosity, I want to check the one minute. Nope, we didn't have a pullback off that high. It just kept going. 
I would keep my eye on GOCOF tomorrow. Miners love their companies, and it sounds like the mother load has been hit with this, and there may be a lot more to give on this stock. As I said, I don't follow mining companies, but when they run, they run like cancer companies when they find the right drug. So I'm fixing my mistake now. We've jumped back over here to Go Metals Course so we can get the rest of the details for this stock. Her relative volume today, whoa. She normally only does 337 shares a day. That is negligible. And that's only on the days that she's actually trading. Today she did 1.2 million, which is a pretty big increase for sure. Share structure, what sort of float we got here? Oh, about 20 and a half million, not bad at all. Uh, what is strange here though is that number. These are the restricted shares. How many shares the insider zone, the management, hedge funds, institutions, stuff like that. Well, there's only 450, 450, not 450,000, 450 million, just 450. Maybe that number is inaccurate. I don't know, but that's an awfully low number. Financials for this company. They got zippity doo dah on the annual and the quarterly, nada. Nothing going on there. Disclosures, their financials will all be current because they're current. And sec filings, nothing since 2020. So there's nothing more here to be seen. You've got a mining company that supposedly hit the mother load for nickel and copper and has a float of 20 and a half million. Charts look like it wants to continue. I'd keep my eye on this stock for tomorrow. Let's take a look at another stock I got for you today. Now this stock, like the others, had a lot of trades today and some great gains. This is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. This is ticker ADTX Addicts Inc. Finished today at 37 cents with almost 114% gains. Now that 37 cent price, that's in the danger zone on the NASDAQ. They have minimum bid price requirements. You cannot let your price stay under a dollar for too long. They'll give you a certain amount of time to fix it. And if you don't fix it in time and get compliant, they just throw you off the NASDAQ down to the OTC market. So that is an issue. So what does this company do? Well, they tell us over here in one of their news presses that Addix is a biotech innovation company developing and commercializing technologies focused on monitoring and modulating the immune system. Addix immune monitoring technologies are designed to provide a personalized immune profile. Wow, that's new. Now, the company did have big news today, but I wouldn't call it good news, not by any means. As a matter of fact, as far as I'm concerned, the company is a sinking ship right now, and they're doing everything they can to keep it afloat. But surprisingly, the investors are not jumping ship. They're actually climbing on board. I know, strange. I'll try to explain what I think is going on here. So what's the relative volume around this company today? Well, she's normally doing 2.3 million. Wow, she did 100 times more shares today, 231 million. Now that's an increase. Remember, it's bad news that came out today. Share structure, what do we got here? All right. The share structure is part of the news. That is something they have addressed, so we're going to talk about that when we get to the news. Financials, well, being a NASDAQ company, you expect some money. Eh, not here. Whoa, that's $105,000 taking those three zeros for a whole year. A whole year, and they only got to keep $27,000. You know that wasn't enough to even pay the management. Quarterly, anything's getting better? Well, yeah, they're doing about 200000 every quarter. That's definitely better. And they're making more money, but they're not getting to keep very much. They're still under $40,000 a quarter. Wow. All right, disclosures. We got a couple disclosures over here. We got two 8Ks. Now, one of these 8Ks is talking about warrants and how they're taking care of those. But the other one, we need to take a look at. Now, remember I was telling you, there is a minimum bid price requirement. They were given time to fix it. They did not fix it. They tell us here on July 20th, 2022, the company received a letter from the NASDAQ market stating that the company had not regained compliance with the minimum price rule on the NASDAQ. Not only that, but the company was no longer in compliance with the NASDAQ listing rule, which requires a company to maintain a minimum of $2.5 million in stockholders' equity. They're in trouble. 
big time. But how do you fix something like this? Well, believe it or not, you got to do it through a reverse split. And that's what the news was today. This is the news that came out. They told us we're going to be doing a reverse split tomorrow. Yeah, the news came out today and they're doing a reverse split tomorrow. So they tell us here Addicts is doing a 1 in 50 reverse split. Now, they have approximately 54 million shares in the float. A 1 in 50 reverse split is going to take that down to like 1.1 million shares. That's it, folks. It's going to be a super duper, really low float. And the price should be somewhere up around, I don't know, uh, 450, somewhere around there. We'll have to see tomorrow. It will be tomorrow it happens. And as I said, people were jumping on board today. That's why the price was going up, not falling. Let's go take a look at that chart now. So that is a DTX six month, four hour chart. Now, when you fall under a dollar and you're down there for too long and you get your warning, NASDAQ gives you 180 days, six months to get your price over a dollar and it has to stay there at close for 20 days in a row. But well, we're looking at a six month chart and we have a high bubble back here of 93 cents. So we know for fact over the last six months, she's never been over a dollar. She was about ready to get her butt tossed down to the OTC. And it cost $75,000 to get back onto the NASDAQ, not counting all the paperwork and stuff you got to do to get there. The only way to get there and save their butt is to get their price over a dollar and have it stay there over 20 days. So they're going to do a reverse split. That's definitely going to kick the price up. But if that price falls again, if it falls back down, there's nothing they're going to be able to do. They will get thrown down to the OTC. So she has been falling all of this time for the last six months. And today was a giant jump. Huge bounce on a reverse split piece of news. Not a reverse merger, a reverse split. Look at those technicals. Everything is going to the moon. I've got to actually roll these down to see the ceilings. They're all in great condition right now. Looking at that 20-day, one-hour view, I mean, there's absolutely nothing going on here for the last 19, okay, 18 days. Then you had a bounce here, serious fall, right back to where she started from. Then we get our news about a reverse split, which means the company should stay on the NASDAQ. That's the positive aspect of this news. She's not going to get yanked off the NASDAQ. So she's climbing, climbing, climbing even after market hours and has hit a high bubble on this time frame of 57 cents. And look, folks, those are excellent technicals. Our RSI is on fire above the overbought. Got to scroll down the MACD. That is a huge tsunami. Our PPO is reaching for the stars, and the volume for the last three days is getting stronger, stronger, stronger. Let's take a look at that five-day, five-minute. So she had a bounce. Most of it was pre-market, and she came back down, and today she has just been stair-stepping all day, all the way up, even after market. Look at how much attention is being. See, people want to get into this before the reverse split. They want to buy it at these prices and not the prices afterwards. This is telling me that people believe the stock is going to rise in price after the split. And most of the time, people do splits to make their price attractive. The price will go up 50 times. So 50 times 37 cents. That's what the price is going to be. Shoot, isn't that $15? Yeah, I think I did the math wrong there. Whatever it is, it will be 50 times the price. And hopefully that'll be appealing to the people who have money and they'll actually start bidding on this company and lifting it up from there. That's the hope anyways. And right now it looks good. I seen she just moved again. You can see she had this drop right there and is churning back up. Well, that's what our technicals look like. A drop and a churn back up. Drop and a churn, drop and a churn, drop and a churn. Looks good, folks. Keep your eye out on this tomorrow. She is going to do a reverse split. You should see a huge bounce. That's not all gains. That's the reverse split. And then maybe, maybe she's going to continue running. And she won't be a penny stock tomorrow. No, she won't be a penny stock. But if you see a surge, few shares, ride it up, cash out, get your money, and run. Now, there were a lot of other stocks that had a lot of trades, but we can only look at so many. So we got three of them there. You got one of them that 
hit the mother load right between copper and zinc. You got one that's doing a reverse split to save its arse and it's going to have a very, very small float of 1 million. And then you got the company that's in the travel agency business that has now got $40 million and looking for 10 exotic properties to buy. You never know what you're going to find doing your DD. You just got to dive in there and wiggle things around a little bit and see what you see. Remember folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.